Today we will learn and reflect on the life of St. Anthony, which was the first monastic biography and was enormously influential in the early and medieval church up to the current day. St. Augustine mentions the life of St. Anthony as being a pivotal work that helped him convince him to be baptized as a Christian by St. Ambrose. And this book will encourage all who read it in their walk with the Lord in their efforts to truly live a godly life. At the end of our talk, we will discuss the sources used for our videos and my blogs that cover the topic. Please, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Let us learn and reflect together. One day St. Anthony went into the church as this gospel verse was being read, and Jesus said, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come, follow me. Anthony perceived that this verse was directed at him, so he immediately gave up the family land, his inheritance, and his other possessions to the poor, leaving enough money to support his younger sister. Anthony was able to do this because his parents had departed this world. His younger sister was put in a convent to be raised, and we can surmise the convent was where she wanted to go, because if this was not the best place for her, Anthony would have taken another path. Now, immediately is a word you see quite often in the, in the first gospel of Mark. When should you repent and lead a godly life? When should you start caring for your neighbor? When should you follow the way of the Lord? Mark says, immediately, Anthony lived in Egypt. Since the Christian persecutions had ended when Christianity became a state religion, the monastic movement sprung up in the desert to strive towards a type of spiritual martyrdom of the flesh. St. Anthony would spend the rest of his long life passing away at the advanced age of 105, living in the desert as a monk, sometimes as an Aramite or hermit, sometimes as the leader of a community of monks. St. Athanasius, during one of his periods of exile, fled to the desert and met St. Anthony, and enlisted his help in combating the heresy of the Arians. Soon after the death of St. Anthony, St. Athanasius wrote the influential Life of St. Anthony to preserve the memory of his holy life. And the scholar Pelican tells us, the first and most influential of the monastic biographies, The Life of St. Anthony by St. Athanasius, the conflict between the Christian hero and the demonic powers is a major theme. Attributing to the demon's superhuman perception and activity, Anthony nevertheless describes them as powerless, especially before the sign of the cross, which prevails against all magic and sorcery. St. Anthony expelled demons from those who were possessed by them and healed many of the sick. Yet St. Athanasius points out that St. Anthony healed not by giving out commands, but by praying upon Christ's name. So it was clear to all that it was not he who did this, but the Lord showing his loving kindness to men and curing the sufferers through St. Anthony. And McGuckin says that St. Anthony was involved with these types of monastic communities, communes under the direction of a senior monk or abbot or father, and in Labrus, which is from the Greek word for the back lane that linked the caves of the valley to a separate church where hermits would meet for weekly worship under the spiritual authority of an elder, and the air medical life or hermit life where a monk would live in seclusion, sometimes with one or two attendants whom he would direct. The life of St. Anthony shows him as a man who commands the devils and proved victorious after terrible struggles that leave him nearly dead and as a philosopher whose greatest fight is against the passions of his own fallible heart. This work gives to the disciple a power of protection against all demonic forces, and is thus a living proof that the church venerates the true God, and it gives the believer an indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, which purifies and strengthens the inner life. The life of St. Anthony was enormously influential to later monastics and Christians. St. Augustine mentions the life of St. Anthony in his book, The Confessions, where he is contemplating baptism after being convinced by the sermons of St. Ambrose on the virtues of Christianity. During this time, St. Augustine offers up his famous prayer, Grant me continence and chastity, but not yet. And he said this about his friend Pontusianus. He read on in his heart and a change was taking place. His mind was being divested of the world. While he was reading his heart leaping and turning in the breast, a cry broke from him as he saw the better course and decided to take it. He saw to his friends, 
I have torn myself free from all our ambitions and have decided to serve God. And the temptations of St. Anthony were a favorite topic for many medieval painters, sometimes picturing the temptations of grotesque demons, some picturing the temptations of lascivious women, and I'm quite sure their motivation was always to instruct the viewer. St. Anthony was constant in prayer, knowing that a man ought to pray in secret unceasingly. St. Anthony learned and imitated all the holy men he could meet, imitating the strengths of each, the graciousness of one, unceasing prayer, freedom from anger, loving kindness, meekness and long-suffering, endurance and sleeping on the ground, and the piety towards Christ and the mutual love which animated all the holy men. St. Anthony strove not to hurt the feelings of any, avoiding the feelings of superiority, but made them rejoice over him as they encouraged each other. St. Anthony arranged for an acquaintance to bring him bread every few days, and he shut himself in the tombs, where he prayed and battled the demons and the devil, who made such a din that the tombs were shaken like an earthquake, and fought for many hours with demons who took on the forms of lions, bears, leopards, bulls, serpents, asps, scorpions, and wolves, striking, goading, and abusing. But St. Anthony did not lose faith, declaring, Faith in the Lord is a seal and a wall of safety. At last a ray of light descended in the tomb, and the demon suddenly vanished. His pain ceased and the building was made whole. St. Anthony asked the Lord, Where were you? Why did you not appear in the beginning to ease my pains? A voice came to him from the Lord. Anthony, I was here, but I waited to see your fight. You endured and were not defeated. I will always comfort you and will make your name known everywhere. Having heard this, Anthony rose and prayed and became stronger through his trials. This story should inspire us not to be discouraged during those hard times when we pray for delivery from our suffering those hard times when nothing goes right in our lives, those hard times that sometimes seem to go on and on for so very long. We should also pray for the strength to endure those hard times and not be angry with God when he appears not to listen. For God always listens. Sometimes God speaks in a small quiet voice in the desert. Sometimes God strengthens. Sometimes God delivers. But always God desires us to endure and gives us the strength to endure. And when reading about the temptations of St. Anthony, we should remember that the early Christians and monks mostly believed that although the ancient Greek gods did exist, they were really demons who appear as gods to deceive the unfaithful. Then St. Anthony drew further into the desert, walling himself into an abandoned fort, praying and battling the demons. For nearly 20 years he trained himself in solitude, never going forth, seldom seen by many. But Manny came out to the desert, eager to imitate his discipline, and his acquaintances wrenched the door of the fort open. They were amazed when he came out, neither fat nor lean, nor aging a day in those twenty years. Because of his unceasing fasting and his prayer, his soul was free from blemish, not contracted by grief, not relaxed by pleasure, not possessed by laughter or dejection, and he was not troubled by the crowd, nor was he affected by the admiration of the crowd. The Lord in his grace gave great speaking ability to St. Anthony and he persuaded many to live the solitary life near the fort, founding the first monastic community in the early church. The twenty years St. Anthony spent praying to the Lord were not wasted years, for St. Anthony accomplished far more in the succeeding years, as he was strong in the Lord, than he would have had he labored in the world all those years he spent in prayer. A long section is devoted to his address to the monks exhorting them, and us, I might add, to persevere in living a godly life, encouraging them, and also us, to withstand the wiles of Satan. We encourage you to read this work for yourself. We'll provide some notable quotes from his address. The scriptures are good for instruction, but it is also good to encourage one another in the faith. Why shouldn't we give up our earthly treasures for virtue's sake so we may inherit a kingdom of eternal life? Why not rather gather treasures that never can be taken away from us? Heavenly treasures like prudence, justice, temperance, courage, understanding, love, kindness to the poor, faith in Christ, freedom from wrath, and hospitality. Let us hold fast our discipline. Let us not be careless. If we live as though dying daily, we shall not sin. Let us strive that wrath will not rule us and that lust will not overcome us. If demons notice Christians, and monks especially, laboring cheerfully and advancing in faith, they will tempt us and hinder us and plan evil thoughts in us. But we need not fear the demons' attacks, 
For by prayer, fasting, and faith in the Lord, the attacks of the demons immediately fail. St. Anthony compares those who follow evil spirits to those who follow Christ. Those who follow evil spirits show tumults and confusion of thought, defection, hatred towards them who live a life of discipline, indifference, grief, fear of death, and disregard of virtue. But those who follow Christ have joy unspeakable, cheerfulness, courage, renewed strength, calmness of thought, and boldness and love towards God. There are many other stories and sayings of St. Anthony in his life uh, in the desert. We'll share our favorites, and again, we encourage you to read the others for yourself. One story tells us that St. Anthony said to some brothers that it was revealed to him in prayer that there were two brethren traveling to meet him, that one had died due to lack of water, and the other would also die if they did not bring a pitcher of water out to him. But if anyone asks why he did not speak before the other died, the question ought not to be asked, for the punishment of death was not Anthony's but God's, who judged the one and revealed the condition of the other. How often do we judge the actions of God? How he permits the suffering of this person or that? Why God permits hurricanes and earthquakes and storms in our lives? Maybe these are questions likewise we should not ask, but instead pray for strength and endurance. I mean, this attitude was shared by many of the Stoic philosophers, which were a greater influence on early Christians and the early Eastern Church Fathers than many realize. Starting with Zeno, the Stoic philosophers loved to discuss lists of virtues and vices, and the Eastern Church Fathers loved to discuss similar lists. And we invite you to sample some of our lectures on the Stoics. There was a young man who wandered nearby who was possessed by a violent demon, whom St. Anthony pitied, and he kept watch over the young man during the night. At night, the young man attacked St. Anthony, and his followers were upset with him. But St. Anthony said, Do not be angry with the young man, for it is not he who attacked me, but the demon which is in him. How often do we reason thus when we are attacked by someone in our lives when somebody abuses us? Do we always blame them, or do we blame the demon in his soul, the demon who found his way in when they were mistreated or abused by someone else many years ago? The demon which is the painful past he can never forget. One time, St. Anthony was questioned by visiting Greek philosophers, and he compared the church to the pagan gods. Which is more beautiful, to confess the cross or to attribute to those whom you call gods adultery and the seduction of boys? For us, the cross is a sign of courage and contempt for death, while paganism celebrates the passions of licentiousness. This is clear evidence that the early church condemned pederasty. St. Anthony also asks the philosophers, how dare you mock us, saying that Christ has appeared to us as a man, seeing that you, bringing the soul from heaven, claim that it has strayed and fallen from the vault of the sky into the body. Then as now, many who mock Christian beliefs are really mocking Christian morals and accountability, for they prefer any wacky Gnostic story, preferring an empty spirituality that does not demand morality. Emperor Constantine and his sons sometimes wrote letters to St. Anthony for advice which he was not inclined to answer out of humility. But his monks urged him, since the emperor was a Christian, he should answer him. So St. Anthony gave them counsel on salvation, to think more of the heavenly kingdom rather than their earthly kingdom, and that they should be merciful and give heed to justice and to the poor. St. Anthony touched the hearts of all he met. Who in grief met Anthony and did not return rejoicing? Who came in anger and was not converted to friendship? What monk, becoming neglectful, came to him and did not return stronger? What young man, having met Anthony, did not immediately deny himself pleasure and love temperance? Who came troubled with doubts and did not gain composure and quietness of mind? Let's discuss the sources we use for this video. Our main source is this rather slim volume on the sayings of St. Anthony that we purchased from Amazon, which is very easy to read, and we encourage you to read it for yourself. If you've never read the Confessions of St. Augustine, in my humble opinion, you have an incomplete understanding of Catholicism and indeed Christianity as well as the modern world. Tremendously influential book. And he mentions St. Anthony as a key work in his conversion himself. If you remember from our other videos, Pelican's volume of the Christian tradition and doctrine and McGuckin's review on the first millennium of the church are our favorite histories of ours. And this is the painting that we used for our thumbnail. The YouTube description contains links to the video script and our blog. Please support our channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking the like and subscribe buttons and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed and we'll get a small commission on those. 
and please consider becoming a patron of our channel. And please click on the links for interesting videos on other topics that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.